Welcome, welcome again to our Bible study here at Grace Baptist Church. Sunday school. I, uh, I actually just love that terminology. If there's a little pause there, Sunday school. Today, we want to take a look at an old saying. I think there's a lot of truth in it. You are what you eat. There is a great deal of truth in that statement when applied to the physical health and appearance of the human body. An even more accurate statement would be, you are what you eat and drink. Now, before everybody out there thinks this is going to be a, a speech or a, le a lecture on physical health and bodily appearance, let me assure you that our focus, as always, will be spiritual. We will use the physical to illustrate the spiritual. It is common and universal knowledge that we must eat and drink properly to have good physical health. The kind of food and drink we consume is very important to our health. Physical health is addressed by the Apostle John in his third letter to God's people. The elder, John, says this, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Now he's talking about physical health there. Consider the instruction in 1 Corinthians 10.31. Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Would it be to the glory of God for us to present our bodies, our physical bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, while at the same time abusing those bodies by eating and drinking in an excessive, gluttonous manner. Christians are to steer clear of such behavior. Proverbs 23, 20. Do not mix with drunkards or with gluttonous eaters of meat. For the drunkard and glutton will come to ruin. Engaging in excessive amounts of strong drink is expressly forbidden in the scripture. Reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, this is addressed in the Bible. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, now listen, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Now listen to this next statement. And such were some of you. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Proverbs 21, 20 verse 1. 
Wine is a mocker. Strong drink, a brawler. And whoever is led astray by it is not wise. I want us to look at Daniel, the book of Daniel. Just going to sort of paraphrase through this while reading some of it. I'm going to make some physical points here, but hold on to this. Try to remember what I'm going to say from Daniel because I'm going to make a spiritual application later. When Israel was taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar, they came to the land of Shinar where they were carried away. Some of the children of Israel, some of the king's descendants, that's Nebuchadnezzar, some of the nobles, they were all set aside because they had ability to serve in the king's palace. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's choice food and of the wine which he drank. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's choice food nor with the wine which he drank. Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. This group of people that was set aside. And Daniel uh, bartered with this gentleman. Tried to reason with him to please test your servants for ten days. Then let our appearance be examined before you and the appearance of the young men who eat the portion of the king's choice food. And as you see fit, deal with your servants. So Daniel and his three friends would not eat the king's choice food and drink of his wine. And the others would eat of the king's choice food and his wine. So this man who was in charge of the eunuchs, the chief of eunuchs, consented with him in that matter and tested them ten days. And at the end of the ten days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh. Now, folks, I looked that up in a word study. And what that is referring to is healthy human beings, even firm, F-I-R-M. So, not only was their health better, their appearance was as well. So again, their, fe their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's choice food. Daniel chapter 1 there points out a difference between a bad diet made up of inferior food and drink compared to a good diet made up of superior food and drink. Physically speaking, you are what you eat and drink. I hope you've not turned the page and gone on to do something else. There's going to be great spiritual application made in this message. Hang in there. Eating... And drinking improperly and or excessively can lead to a multitude of life-changing difficulties and ultimately to physical death. We all know that. It's common knowledge. Apart from some scriptural mandates that God has given his people concerning eating and drinking, I want us to start looking at eating and drinking in the spiritual realm. Listen closely, please. Once we are born from the womb, and remember, in the womb, at conception, uh, uh, because of the umbilical cord, we receive food and drink, nutrition, through the mother. Once we are born from that womb, 
that life we had in our conception must be maintained by a vital union we have with food and drink by consuming them. Very important point. When you eat and drink, you have a vital union with food that again results in physical life. However, due to sin, we die physically and are no longer able to maintain life by eating and drinking. In the spiritual realm, we must be conceived by the Spirit of God as He enters us with the Spirit of eternal life and births us again spiritually. God the Father penetrated the womb of Mary with the Holy Spirit, bringing about the birth of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Even so, the Father penetrates His people with the Spirit of His Son, the seed, Christ, the seed who has eternal life in Himself. We are penetrated with that in the new birth. This causes us to be born again. As we have come to learn, this same Spirit equips us with faith, whereby we consume the gospel of Christ, manifesting our new life and new birth. I'm going to repeat that part. I was going to repeat all of it. I'm just going to repeat that last part. We've come to learn in our Bible study through the years, hearing sound men from God, we've come to learn this same spirit equips us with faith whereby we consume the gospel of Christ, manifesting our new life and new birth. As newborn babes, we desire the pure milk of the word that we might grow thereby. 1 Peter 2, 2. A human being does not live by bread alone, referring to physical food, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Matthew 4, 4. We must eat and drink from the word of God in order to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 3, 18. Please listen closely. I say that a lot because you need to listen closely. You will not, you will not grow in the grace and knowledge of Christ without searching the scriptures. As Christ made clear in John 5, 39, he says, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they that testify of me. A testimony. A true testimony found only in the scriptures. But beware. Beware of the false teachers. The hirelings who peddle the scriptures and twist them to their own destruction 
and the destruction of those who consume their doctrine. These false teachers have the poison of snakes under their lips. That's in the Bible. You know, 99% of some food and drink that you consume may be harmless, but if 1% of it is lethal poison, it can kill you. These false teachers, these people are deceivers. Deceiving and being deceived. Propagators of the doctrines of demons. Remember Daniel? As with Daniel, do not eat of their choice food, nor drink of their wine. It will be most unhealthy spiritually, even lethal. Now, I believe God gave me some new light in an area that I have struggled with for so long, it's not even funny. I, I taught from this area a little while back here in Sunday school. Please listen to this. Oh, my goodness. I, I guess, really, if you don't hear anything that I've said from up to this point and then the rest of it, please hear this. 1 John chapter 2, verses 24, excuse me, verses 26 and 27. John writes to the people of God, These things I have written to you concerning those who deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him the Holy Spirit of God abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you. Now, what is he talking about there? It's right there. It's, it's right there in the sentence before it. Those who are trying to deceive them will not be able to do so because of the anointing, the Holy Spirit of God abiding in us. We don't need anybody to teach us that. Because the Spirit is in us. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in Him. This anointing, in other words, is giving us an enablement which enables us to discern between false and true doctrine. That's what this is all about. In first John. Now come on. Every one of us in here know that we do not know all doctrine. Just boom. We know all doctrine. We are taught doctrine. But I tell you, there's one thing that we do know because it's in us. It's the Spirit of God in us. When we hear someone teaching us, we know whether it is of God or not. Now let me prove what I'm saying. The same Apostle John learned this from what he recorded from Christ himself. John 7, verses 16 and 7. 17, excuse me. Christ says, My doctrine is not of me, but of him who sent me. If anyone is willing to do his will, the will of the Father, now, how does that come about? God makes you willing in the day of his power when he demonstrates that power by birthing you again from above, enabling you to receive the truth. If anyone is willing to do his will, that, will, that one shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God. Now, is that clear enough? We have an anointing, and we do not need to be taught 
how to receive uh, uh, good doctrine and bad doctrine. It's in us. The Spirit of God reveals to us whether this teaching is of God or whether it's not from God. Christians know when they are being taught in matters of significance whether or not the doctrine is from God because of the indwelling Holy Spirit of God. John the Apostle again, a teacher appointed by God, says this, We are of God. He who knows God hears us. Why? Because we have that anointing in us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth, which is who? Who is the spirit of truth? The Holy Spirit. By this we know the spirit of truth, and we recognize it in those teaching us, and the spirit of error. You see, we have an anointing that reveals these things to us. That's from God. That's not from God. We can't be taught that, folks. That's in us, enabling us to know the difference between truth and a lie. In spiritual matters, we must eat and drink only of sound doctrine. And we are enabled to know the difference. Just as we must not eat or drink something that will make us sick or even kill us physically, we must defer from consuming those things that are not of God spiritually. And may I add to these things that we are not to consume, listen now, this is everyday life, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. 1 John 2.16 Oh my goodness, today in this world, in this present evil age, there are so many sources which we can consume, from which we can consume things pertaining to these lusts, which war against our very own souls. We must be very, very careful in what we watch, in what we hear, in what we read. We cannot eat or drink from them. We cannot consume them. Again, they war against our very own souls. And brothers and sisters, you know what I'm talking about. You struggle with it every day. Now in closing, to live physically, we must have a vital union with the right food and drink. To live spiritually and eternally so, we must have a vital union, a living union with Christ. By eating and drinking of his flesh and blood spiritually, figuratively. Reading. From John chapter 6, John chapter 6, bouncing around a bit, so just listen please. Christ says, I am the bread of life. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread... He will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life 
of the world. Most assuredly, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Now, I know our King James versions use the word eat, eateth, all through this context, but they're two different words. I, I mean, you can check that out for yourself. It wouldn't be wrong to use the word eat. But I have another word I think is going to be better for us to understand. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's accurate to, to translate it this way. This is a completely different word now. In that verse 54. The one feeding on my flesh and drinking my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Another very important point here. This is a present participle, this verb, feeding on and drinking, the two verbs. They're present participles. Folks, you can't just do it one time. You can't just do it one time in the day or one time in the week or one time when you so-called got saved. Friends, this is a present and continual thing that you carry on all the time. Now, that's, that's the fact. You can argue with it all you want. It's the grammar. It's the way it is. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. The one feeding on my flesh and drinking my blood abides in me, and I in him. Folks, you can't feed and drink on the... Uh, 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 flesh and blood of Christ, again, just one time. You've got to be doing it all the time. Or else, how can you abide in him always? It's a continual, present and continual matter. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father... So the one feeding on me will live because of me. Friends, Christ is our life. We have to be continually eating and drinking of him. Spiritually speaking. Figuratively speaking. Of course... In another matter related to this, we figuratively and obediently celebrate communion by feeding on the bread and drinking the cup in memory of Christ, sacrificing his body, shedding his blood on the cross, substituting himself for his people, the elect, securing for them forgiveness, Forgiveness of sins leading to eternal life. But the day by day, spiritual application <clears throat> of feeding on and drinking of Christ is carried on, number one, when we read and think upon his word, leading us to follow Christ in all we do, day by day. Number two, we feed on and drink of Christ when we pray. As led by the Holy Spirit of God to seek his will in all things. We feed on and drink of Christ when we fellowship with one, one another around the teaching of his word, the Bible. These three things, reading his word, praying, fellowship, fellowshipping around the teaching of the word of God, those three things should add up to a continual feeding on and drinking of Christ. A continual communion, a continual spiritual communion with and consciousness 
of Christ. Spiritually speaking, what are you eating and drinking today? What are you living on today to give you spiritual life? If it's not Christ, you are a dead person walking. The Lord says, taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord says, drink of the water of life freely. You see... You are what you eat and drink. Amen.